Welcome. I'm Vivian Lee, and tonight we have Alexander Grimaldi with us. We're going to talk about his views and his recent announcement to run for city council, and we'll just get straight right into it. So, Alex, why are you running? Jeez, uh, every time someone would ask me this question, I would want to give a goosebump-inducing answer, and I never could. Uh, but I'm running now because I feel that it's time for my generation to enter politics and government at all levels and um, I, I really want to change because the, the older generations they want to continue to have what they created and that just doesn't work now and so I, I want to bring us into the 21st century I see, I see. And what what issues, if any, did you have during your first campaigns? I read that you ran before. And if you have these same issues, what are you going to do about it? Uh -oh. One of the issues, it didn't have to do with uh, policies or anything. It had to do with my age and experience. And People would come up to me and tell me that I, when I was running for state assembly, I should run for city council. And so uh, I ran for city council, and then they would come up to me and tell me that I should finish college. I, I just, I, I don't think the questions are, anyone questioning my experience, it's a, a relevant question anymore. Mm -hmm. And so now if someone asks me, or tells me, that uh, I need to wait. I'm 30 years old. I'm not going to wait for anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. Let's see, in one of your uh, policy speeches, you address transparency in the city government. Uh, last year, a city council member was arrested, and a current city council member candidate released court documents from the case on Facebook. How do you feel about? this. Okay, I, I know what you're talking about. Yes, um, well, I think the posting of the court documents, and uh, from what I saw, it also had to do with a restraining order, and none of the names were redacted from that order before it was posted, and um, I think that it was a private, personal matter, and it should have been handled quietly. Um, the city council member in question, it wasn't doing anything uh, against the city. So oh. enough for us to know that he was arrested because he is a city council member. However, the the matter in which he was arrested, I think it was none of our business. Right. right. And it right. shouldn't have been posted on online whatsoever. And the other person in in the incident. Uh, is not a city council member, is not a member of any public anything, really. They're a private citizen and it, they should have been afforded that privacy. Do you feel in that situation the unprofessionalism reflects back on the city as a whole? Yes and no. Yes, because um, a lot of people on Facebook felt that they had every right to know every detail and that the person who posted it was in the right. And I think that that might show a little bit of immaturity on the city. And then no, because there were a lot of people that were against it and they still are and they still bring it up. And um, so I think that we need to learn boundaries, even with people in public. Just because the person is in public doesn't mean that you own their privacy, their private lives. Mm -hmm. I agree. We need to know what is our business, and that wasn't it. What are your aspirations in life? <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, well, 
uh, I used to want to be president of the United States. <laughs> uh, now it's just to be successful. I would love to be comfortable in life. And you say it's to be successful. What do you define as a successful life? Well, I have my business, Grimaldi Beauty, and I would like that to go somewhere. And um, just to be able to take care of my myself and my future family without uh, having to worry about everything. Uh, I grew up poor, and the weight of the world should not be on children's shoulders, but I did bear that weight when it came to rent and how we were just going to make it through the next month. And I don't ever want to experience that again. I don't want my children to have to experience that either. I want them to know that um, things are not easy in life, but I also don't want them to know what it really feels like to struggle and to have that weight. A six-year-old should not have that weight. I agree. Uh, do you think Fowler is ready to elect its first African-American city council member? That's a good question. Uh, well, we had our first uh, uh, gay city council member uh, about ten years ago. Um, that is a difficult question <laughs> to answer. Uh, with my experiences here, I, I think the city has changed a bit. Um, but when I was younger, the, absolutely not. Uh, now I think so with the newer people coming in and uh, more people are more open to things, I think yes. And I mean, the when I ran the last time, there was another African American that was running and um, he pulled ahead of me. Uh, funny story, yes, he, he still to this day blames me for him losing, <laughs> but um, we, we laugh about that. Um, so, uh, you tell him, you'll be like, no, I voted for you, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, I, that is a very tough question, we'll have to see in November. Hmm. Yes, we will. Yeah. In your view, what are some of the most important issues our city is facing? Wait, I, I do want to go back to that, that last question, <laughs> though, on um, the African American City Council. Um, the city does have a history uh, when it comes to African Americans, particularly in the history, the contributions of African Americans to the building of this city. Uh, we have a park here. Uh, the Panzac Park. The land was given by an, uh, an African American family, but the city chose to name it after a white man. And I don't think that's fair. And um, there's not many things in town that are. Uh, there's like no plaques or anything, you know, praising any African American. There is a little park on Ninth Street, I believe. It's a little hole in the wall, and I feel like it's a slap in the face. It tells me that our contributions are only worth the footnotes of history, and I think that we deserve more than that, because, I mean, an African American was the first person to plant a tree in this city, but you don't, you wouldn't know that anywhere. So, um, I just, I hope that now people can and will, but like I said, we'll find out in November. And would you like to see some some memorabilia of, of African American impact oh, in yes. our history? Some well, sort of plaque, some sort of dedication? Or... I, I would like to change the name of the park. They were, um, when I had brought it up before, they s talked about putting a plaque up, but I don't think that's enough for, for that. Mm -hmm. They donated land that was worth money to the city, and the city was like, oh, okay, well, we're not going to name it after you. We're not going to even tell anybody that you gave it to us. So I don't think a plaque is enough. A little plaque is just not enough. I think the whole name of that park should be changed to the Abernathy Family Park. And um, 
the African American churches contributed a lot. Members of my own family have contributed a lot. And um, I'm not saying that members of my family should be given plaques <laughs> or anything, but I, I think that um, we need to dig deep into our history and um, recognize the people who contributed. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, I circulated a petition to have a uh, historical center put in where the old library used to be, um, but instead they decided to put a history room in the new library. And still, there is no recognition of the contributions of African Americans in this city in anywhere in that room. So I agree. I have been in that room, and it was very hard to navigate. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's in drawers and cases and files and discs. It's not labeled very well. Hmm. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, in your view, what are some of the most important issues our city is facing, and what, if any, could be possible solutions? The top of my head, uh, term limits on the city council is very important. Um, I said in one of my policy speeches that um, there should be term limits of three years, uh, three terms of four years, and we should expand our city council. When it rains, I know that a lot of people have this issue. When it rains... Let me stop you right there because we will get to that question. Oh, okay. Later on. Okay. Um, so... Um, but I like that one. Uh, um, what, if anything, do you think our city needs or needs to stop in order to grow in a positive direction versus a negative direction such as downtown Fresno? Um, make it easier for new businesses to come in. Um, I know that the city council is very finicky when it comes to allowing new businesses in. Uh, we were supposed to get a new motel, but because they wanted to put in a pool, and the hotel has a pool, they decided to tell the motel uh, company that they have to get rid of the pool, and so the motel backed out. That was stupid. Um, one person owns most of the buildings downtown, and they charge too much, and they add things that should be their own responsibility onto the renter, and that's how we lost um, one of the salons downtown. Another thing is, we have too many salons. <laughs> there's not that many people in town. I mean, really. Um, there's an, another one coming in, and <laughs> you turn the corner, there's another salon right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to be the city of the most churches, now we're going to be the city of the most salons. Okay, they are at a run <laughs> for each other right now. And do you think that would be like something that the city could apply for a grant from the state? Oh yes, absolutely. To do for its citizens? Oh yes, the city is always applying for, for grants. <laughs> uh, they applied for grants to get those Priuses they never use. That's true. So yes. Uh, do you feel this pandemic... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question again? Because there was something that I, I think I might have missed. Uh, I said previously, what, if anything, do you need? Do you think our city needs or needs to stop in order to grow in a positive direction? Yes. And it has to do with the housing developments. Um... I think that we should, uh, I know I personally would not approve any new housing development until we fix the issues with the schools, which I talk about in one of my policy videos. I think that we should, with the high school and with the middle school, we should rebuild the schools in the way that the old high school was, indoor school, because you can build up and build out and you have more room, because in 10 to 15 years we'll have to build two more schools. So it just would be cheaper and easier to just rebuild the, what we have now and expand the need for two new schools by 40, 50 years, maybe even longer. And um, on the housing development part, it's difficult for people of color to move into Fowler. And I know many families, African American in particular, uh, that have had a difficult time with moving into the city, and I think that the city should 
um, I don't want to say quota, uh, but there should be some way that we can advertise to people of color. But something so that we have more people of color in the city. I think that's important. And, and when, when you say people of color, are you just talking about African Americans or are you talking about African Americans, Samoans, everybody, Asians, I don't know, moon men? When I say people of color, that, that means the people of all colors. Yes. Because as of now, our, our town is predominantly Latino. Yes. Yes. yes they are not the minority. <laughs> no, they're definitely not. Um, but when, when I see a black person in town that I've never seen before, I tell my grandmother and she tells me, that's, that's odd. That shouldn't happen. But it's just so surprising that, you know, hey, there's more people that look like us here in town. And it's a good thing. And there's just not a whole lot of African Americans here. So... I can speak from my experience, that's why I pointed out African Americans. But when I say people of color, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, you know, everyone. Uh, do you feel this uh, current pandemic will change or impact the future of our town? They're frustrated now and they're ready for everything to open back up. I know I am. Um, but in the long run, per se, in for the city, I don't think things will change very much. Um, I did notice that people are walking more at night, which is nice. I think people will continue to do that. But on a more broader level, more serious level, I, I don't think so. We just need to be prepared for the next time, because there will be a next time. And Fowler's been doing pretty good on this, too, by the way. I mean, we don't have that many cases. We only had one. I heard four last time. Oh, I haven't been updated. Um, yeah, there's four the last I heard. Um, yeah. Other than that, I think that um, the city should be more... should communicate more with the the citizens on what's going on. Like, you have to go on Facebook to find out that four people have had coronavirus yes. here in town. There should be a call. I mean, they call for everything else. The farmer's market, something going on in town, a parade. I mean, they can do an automated message on that. Let us know. Be careful. How do you feel about the current state of our school board, uh, our schools, and our teachers and lack thereof? Yeah. Okay, the school board. Uh, yes, I heard I'm not really that involved in the school system because, I mean, I've been out of school for 13 years now. Uh, but I, I have heard that there's there are issues. Um, I, I heard they reneged on contracts. Yes. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah, a lot of really great teachers are Resign. Cho choosing to leave. Yeah, teachers don't get paid what they're worth, and I don't think that's fair. But I don't think that the city itself can do anything when it comes to the school board. I think the school board has to answer to the state. Um, but if I was, let's say, the governor or something, I would have the superintendent of all the schools come down here and shape things up. Because the way it's going now, no. No. And they wouldn't want me on the school board. No. <laughs> We wouldn't, no one would be reneging on anything. The teachers should get exactly what they want. They are educating the future. That's the most important thing. Mm, I agree. So, yeah. And as teachers continue to get paid less and less, there's less of them. Right. Which is not a good thing. And if we're going to build, uh, rebuild the schools and they're going to be bigger, we're going to need more teachers. Exactly. And with all these housing developments and the more students we have, we're definitely good, going to need more teachers. In the late 90s, uh, when I was in third grade, there was a crisis at Fresno Unified, and uh, the state almost took over the district. 
we were very close, and they were cramming so many kids into one classroom, and one teacher cannot handle all those kids. It's just, there was no way to properly educate the children when you have a room full of 65 kids to one teacher. And then they were mixing up the grades. Uh, when I was in fourth grade, we had fourth grade and fifth grade to, together. And that's too much to ask for a teacher. And then pay them less than what they're worth. I mean, come on. As our town grows and welcomes many new housing developments and families, do you feel that the conditions of our town are beginning to suffer, such as the sidewalks, the roads, the street lighting, and the failing, severely failing drainage system? Yes. <laughs> In uh, one of my last answers, uh, I alluded to that. Uh, yes. When I ran for city council ten years ago, um, I gave an interview and I mentioned the sidewalks. They were pretty bad then and they are pretty bad now. Um, yes, we should. Uh, I, this measure in thing, they had fixing the roads. So far, all they've done is cover up potholes. Okay, so don't tell somebody that you're going to do this with the money and you're going to do a half-assed job. Mm -hmm. No. If you're going to fix the roads, fix the roads. Use the money to fix the sidewalks. Fix the lights. Put in new lighting. Energy efficient lighting. More lighting. You should yes, be able to walk lighting. down the street and it not be dark yeah. half a mile down. Right. For the rest of the way down, like it is once you get past the park. Right. And, um... The drainage system, when it rains, it floods all over town. And at my house, when it rains, our bathtub, our toilet, and our sink get clogged up. And that costs us a lot of money to fix, and the city's not going to shell that money back to us. No way. They'll say, oh, it's on you, when really it's a city problem. They know what's happening, they put the little signs out there telling you that it's flooded. So, somebody knows, but they're more worried about using Measure N for other things like raises. You can keep your, your raise and start fixing some things. Like I said, don't do a half-assed job. If you don't want to do the job, I'll gladly do it for you. And I know of other people that will be glad to do it too. Oh, count me in. <laughs> Finally, what in your opinion is the most valuable thing that you have to offer in service of our town? Hmm. My mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm very vocal. Uh, I always have been in certain things. Um, I have, as I got, as I have gotten older, I have been more vocal, and I, I, I think that's a strength. Uh, being young is a strength. New ideas, progressive ideas, willing to change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. Well, I thank you for uh, having me and doing this interview. It's really, really fun. I did. It has been fun. We should be back any time. Once again, this has been Vivian Lee and Alexander Grimaldi. And good night.